In today's video, we are turning Shopify's free theme refresh into a general dropshipping store. A big reason why general stores lose conversions is that customers coming from social media such as TikTok can't find the product that they saw in a video. They get overwhelmed by the disorganization and the number of products they see and they leave. This redesign is going to take the overwhelm out and drive conversions by focusing on organizing and highlighting the products they are looking for. This redesign is very intentional about the customer experience on both desktop and mobile. Before we get into the video, if you like videos about winning products, dropshipping, Shopify themes, apps, and tutorials, do us a favor and hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on. Now, let's get into the video. The products are the star of the theme, so that is where we're going to start. Even if you already have all of your products added, don't skip this part of the video because what I show you now is a vital part in how I set up the rest of the store. For my products, I have these lists that I created for our channel. All I have to do is copy and paste the AliExpress link to the import app. It's really simple. If you want these lists as well, click the join button to become a channel member. You'll get access to all of our past lists and also get early access to ones for future videos that haven't been posted yet. When your products have been added, we need to organize them into categories. This is absolutely essential for how we set up the rest of the theme, and also not having things organized could cost you conversions. Someone who sees the product on TikTok, for example, is going to go to your store and check the homepage, check your categories, and or use the search to find the product they saw. If it can't be found, you will lose that sale, so it's super important to keep things organized. So go through each one of your products and under product organization, select a type for each one. Shopify has already come up with all the categories, so all you need to do is select the correct one. Copy that text, then what you're going to do is go to collections, create a new collection, and paste it in the title. Then set the collection type to automated with the settings as product type is equal to, and then paste that same title in the box. If that doesn't work for you, meaning no products are appearing underneath the category, go back to your product and paste that same text under tags. Then go back to your category and set it as product tag is equal to and paste the text in the box. I experienced this issue myself, so I created a test product to troubleshoot and the product type setting worked when I manually created the product. So that tells me it may have something to do with the app and Shopify not communicating properly when the products are imported. The next thing you need to do is go through and rename your product titles and edit your descriptions and variants. Oh. I know, I know, but if you don't, again, it could cost you a sale. The imported product titles look spammy and it looks like an AliExpress product, so people are either going to recognize that and go order it for themselves from AliExpress, or they won't order it at all because it looks spammy and untrustworthy. I know going through and renaming all of your products, editing the descriptions, variants, and categorizing everything is a pain. It takes a lot of time, it's tedious, but you don't wanna spend all that time making videos and generating traffic to your store only to lose that lead because someone couldn't find the product they were looking for or because it looks spammy and untrustworthy to them. Before we move on, we're gonna create one more special category and that is a viral category. This category is going to have products in there that are currently going viral on social media. With this category, you wanna set it as product tag is equal to, and then type viral. Anytime you notice a product is going viral, this could be on your own account or someone else's, make sure to tag that product as viral. You will see later when we work on the homepage why I'm asking you to do this. Next, we're gonna create a menu. Click online store, navigation, add menu, and start adding in your collection links. Make sure to add a home link as well, and then click save. That's it for the back end of things. Let's get to the fun part of customizing our theme. If you haven't already, go ahead and install the free Shopify theme refresh. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is adjust the colors. So go to theme settings, colors, and follow along with me.
I went with a red-orange theme for mine, but you can change up the gradient and accent colors however you like. I recommend matching it to your logo, but if you're starting from scratch, feel free to choose whatever you want and then create a logo to match afterwards. Now let's adjust our checkout colors. The last thing we're going to change for the overall design is the font. I'm going to change this to match the same font that I used in my logo. You don't have to choose this font, I actually encourage you to choose one that best matches your logo instead. Alright, now let's get into setting up the home page. Starting with the announcement bar, if you guys have something really important you want to advertise such as a discount code or a sale, feel free to keep this here. For me, I want people to sign up for my email newsletter to get their discount, so for me this would just take up space, so I'm going to remove it. Next we have our header, I'm going to upload my logo, and change the width to 250px. For menu, select the one that you made with all of the categories. I'm not a fan of how the links spill over into the second line, but we are a bit limited with our choices for this theme, so we will go with it. It's not a huge deal on mobile anyhow because everything is tucked away in the mobile menu. The other thing we want to do here is select the mega menu option. Next we have the slideshow. I want you guys to think really critically about every section you have in your stores. Just because it's there doesn't mean you need to keep it. If it doesn't serve a purpose, get rid of it. The purpose of a slideshow is to draw attention to certain products. I feel like giving one product that much space in a general store would be a mistake. I can do this in a better way and show more products by using a featured collection block, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this. For the rest of the sections, if it's not a featured collection, the email newsletter sign up, or the footer, you can go ahead and delete it. Here's what we are left with. Let's get into the featured collection settings. With a general store, we want to make it as simple as possible for our customers to find exactly what they are looking for and also to get as many products as we can in front of their eyes. As I mentioned in the beginning, I was really intentional about these choices so that whether you're on mobile or desktop, everything is organized and you're seeing as many products as possible. For this first section, name it Viral Products. The heading size should be set as small. Change your collection to the Viral category. Set the maximum number of products to 5, and the number of columns on desktop to 5. Click Enable View All. This is going to give your customer a button to view all of the products in that category. Click Enable Carousel on Desktop. And then for this category only, we're going to change the color scheme to Accent 1. For the image ratio, select Square. You can see how much space you end up saving just by setting this to square instead of portrait. Select show second image on hover, show product rating, and enable quick add button. The number of columns on mobile should be set to 2. And select enable swipe on mobile. This is going to save vertical space and allow your visitors to swipe horizontally to see more products. For the section padding, change the top and bottom padding to 32px. This removed the large gap between the sections, which is using up valuable space. For our next featured collection, choose any category you like, write in your title, and change the heading to small. We're going to do all the same settings as before. The only thing that's different is the color scheme, and that will be set as background one. You can add in as many featured collections as you like. For any ones that follow, the setup and settings will be exactly the same. The only thing that will be different for any featured collections below this one is that the top padding will be 0 instead of 32, and that goes for any more you add. For the email section, the color scheme should be set to accent 1, change the bottom padding to 60px, and change the offer text. For the footer, add in your store policies, a way to contact you, and your social media links. 
That's it for the home page. Now let's edit our collection page. Remove the slideshow. Again, it's taking up unnecessary space. Change the image ratio to square. Show product rating. Enable quick add button. Number of columns on mobile, two. Anything below this section except the email newsletter and the footer, go ahead and delete it. For the email newsletter, edit it to match the home page. You'll want to do the same thing for your products page. Just go ahead and delete any unnecessary sections. All right, that's it. Let's take a look. If you like this video, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up or leave me a comment down below. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. We post a lot of time sensitive content such as winning products on this channel. So make sure you have notifications turned on so that you can be one of the first to market when we post those videos.